And there's be. oh, because yes, on this one there are two mics. Well, the mic on this one seems to be going. There we go. Oh, we've started having people. What I will do is I will now transfer this one over to this side of the world. There Hello. we go. Hello. Got three people joining in already. All right. Be thrown. I'm going to be doing Greek bottles. Yeah, Greek today. bottles. Do you have the right color clip? Color yes. bucket? Okay. Got the water all ready. Do you remember the size of the pieces? I think that one was 40-50. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to remember the sizes of the pieces of clay to remake a thing. To make more of a to thing. To make more of a thing, because people like the shot. So we make more. We have Susan and Andy and Maddie and Rosalie and a pop-up in the way. And I think Armory. Okay, so that's a 44, so that's right in the middle. That's what we will be throwing up more of today. Is that. Are these... Wow, and there's some serious. Um, you got you got winter sun. Yeah, in winter your sunlight face. in my face. Yep. No clouds today. So, what that pe first piece of clay that I gave her is going to be? It's going to be this part of the vessel because this is actually thrown in three parts. It helps if I turn on the wheel first. As we, where I'm setting this, she can actually see quite readily. Yeah, it's not a big one. No. It's what, maybe eight feet across? Yeah, eight by nine. Yeah. Fairly small room. Well, it's supposed to be an office. Okay. Move this up and actually see the, uh, um, the jug that I sat down was actually in front of the scrolling bit of chat comments here. So it's like, uh, maybe I should move that slightly. So, do you guys have any questions? Oh, join it. Since we currently have two viewers. Yeah, and if you have any questions, um, ask away. And if you want Virtual to camp. That's what it was called. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, Still playing around. Uh, still playing around with the software, and um, trying to remember the little add-ons that I got for one version of the software. Wow, I so totally misspelled virtual. In which case, I thought you were perfect. Ha ha. Yes, there we go. Having to remember the terms for the additional bit in the software so I can get it installed on the other version of the software, the one that has the go faster racing stripes basically. More people joining in there. All right. Putting Cormax back and um, Andrea. Yeah. There's sometimes I was like, <laughs> reading people's names is way different than um alone than reading them just to yourself. Oh, good morning, Cormac. Good morning, everybody. Okay. He says, "Oh, hey." We doing Greek bottles today. Yep, that's what we will be doing. Multi part is throwing more there. of this kind of shape here. Right, she's now throwing I'm doing the bottom part, three not pieces. the base. Yeah, she's doing the, the body as compared to the neck or the foot. I'm gonna be making body parts. Oh, uh, he says that the uh, Gorilla Glue uh, did the trick mending the oh, handle. Good, Great. I'm glad to hear that. We've always had really good luck with Gorilla Brand Super Glue when it comes to repairing little chips taken out of the edge of personal pieces or, or it's snapped off handles. I'm trying to do is get all of the bottom and the sides the same thickness, get it the right shape. <laughs> yeah, 
it's because she's trying to replicate that part right there. Now once it's the right consistency, uh, this part here, this curvature here is actually trimmed because there was, there's always extra clay down at this part of the piece. And that's um, to, yeah. when the piece So I can make that. sure that the neck, the neck fits, I have to measure it. That's why I have my handy dandy calipers that are your basic clay color. As I recall, the plastic on those is actually there. red. <laughs> <It's not laughs> yes, hold it in shot. <laughs> Uh, a little distance. Everyone reading this should take advantage of the three for thirty dollars cookie press deal because the world needs more cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the plug. Let's see now. I'm going to measure the. This part measures the inside, and that part measures the outside. And the outside is the part that you're really going to need at this point, right? Yeah, because what I don't need is a ruler. I need something that's going to measure the diameter of the opening. And the entirety and I'm of put the this one right here. Oh. That's right below the camera. Glare. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, because the total height between the body and the neck on this one is about ten and a half inches at the moment, which I know is only about Next half. It's okay. So you won't. See, so you need the bit for the nick. Yeah, about 35, 40. Yeah, I was thinking another piece that's around the 40-ish range. About the, about the same amount of clay. Yeah, about the same amount of clay. Gwendolyn and Lee and Michael joining in. Oh, good morning, everyone. There we go. 47, so it's about the same amount. Models. And I'm getting the glare off the wet base. If I sit way over here, the light's not reflecting into my eyes. Or your eyes are mine. I thought I'm also trying to read a screen. Yeah. If, if I was doing it late afternoon, it would be coming from over there and be right in my eyes. And that's when I have to take the blinds in this window and actually lower them because she complains at the light. And having eyes that are light sensitive is great when you're wandering around at night. During bright sunlight. Nah, not so oh. much. Find out the color change in the lens is. It's actually part of my prescription because I'm that light sensitive. There it is. Get the people I'll show you ahead. Watch that help. Bats are always dirty. Nobody cleans them. Holly <laughs> Johnson and Catherine Walters. Hello, Catherine. Hello, everybody. Hello, Holly. Holly Johnson. Yes. I can just about read the screen from here. Yeah, that's. It's nice that you know installing that other old graphics card onto this box is, seems to have improved the resolution we're getting out of that screen. Yeah, which means I can actually read it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that would be an awkward distance for your bifocals, wouldn't it? I was saying I can't use the bifocals at that distance. <laughs> so out of all the members of the household, she's the one with the worst vision. That's the only one of us who's far sighted. I inherited that from my mother, not from my father. He was very nearsighted. My mother was very far sighted. I'm glad the one nearsightedness went out, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> uh, Brent, you and Brendan Lewis joined. Hello, Brendan Lewis. I was smart. I did not start downloading that file. Well, that would have streaming. been stupid. Yep, that would have been not good. And we. And my guess is somebody else isn't clogging all the signal today. Uh, as far as I know, he's he might still be asleep. It's our IT person. Yes. Christopher the Quiet. Most of yeah, in front of the computer. So that piece will need to be colored in a lot as of yet. Well, yeah, but... It has to be wide enough for her to actually get her hand into it first. My hands are small, but 
think that's right. Let's see. Now I'm going to measure down here. Yep. Yeah. See now this see I'm piece measuring is... because this piece will be sliced off and set on top of there. This is going to be the neck to the bottom. So that half of it there is about five inches tall. So that one would ideally end up around um, six ish. Yeah. Now what I'm doing is coloring it and making it smaller around, which will make it taller. Because all that mass has to go somewhere. And unlike the jugs we were throwing the other day, this one will actually have to have an even lip to begin with and not have that um, high point that this one does because these Greek vessels had their lips built in a very different way. Because yeah. theirs was flared and then pinched well, up it's dramatically. Still a little, you'd still use the high part for the lip. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm. Smoosh the bottom down. Yeah, because the bottom is not an important piece on that one. No, the bottom gets cut off. That's where all those cute little plates are. Yeah, come all from. those lit those little two dollar plates that we have and the whole basket full of them. It's from the bottom of these Greek pieces like this. And brightens. And yes. Right, and this multi-piece bottles. Occasionally, occasionally she gets a full-sized plate out of the, um, out of the when we're doing, uh, um, amphora. Not as much because we started doing them as the, the two-bowl two construction. So but you still do get some. You get some, but you get more, you know, hand width rather than 8 to 12 inches. Yeah. Yeah. And in other countries, we're from Meow. I would be a Desi. Oh. And this would be the Desi Cat. Also known as the teddy bear or the whiny one. Or the one that cause, causes <sighs> Desi, Desi Asters. Asters. Yes, this is the, the cause mm. of Desi Asters. Ever you come across one of the clearance pieces that, yeah, they're the cat ass trophies? Oh, yes, sitting, sitting on the lap is not so bad, is it, Desi? Whereas the older one, uh, Nara will go, nope, it's not my idea to sit on your lap, so I will run away now. This one is, oh, you want to cuddle? I could stay here. Just the tedious process of making it taller. Because you can't change the shape quickly without causing it to collapse. It's about hand width. Uh, I have to get some of the weight from there and bring it up. Which oh, yeah. makes the top wider again, but that's okay. You can make it narrower again. I can make it narrower again. Because yeah, the neck on this sucker is probably... Yeah, it's only like two inches across. Well, it'll shrink some too. Yeah. So this clay, out of all the ones we use, has the most variable <sighs> yes, shrinkage rate. Yes. And now it's gotten too big. I yep, that was the case. It's the constant adjustment when you're doing dealing with pieces of multiple parts. It's better too big than too small. True. I wonder if I still have uh, Kelly Fraser Joy. Good morning. Hello and good morning. Anybody has any questions, yeah. feel free to type them in. Because there's lots of just slow time when it comes to making these. I want to flatten out the rim some more, I think. 
one because it still makes it more of a. Oh, you've got the pinch the wrong way around. They yep, go in. Pinch. Yeah. You. Come on. We could wait until it firms up some too. Really funny. Yeah. And it'll be more refined once it dries up some. Yep. And that will go with the other piece. And now there's still one more piece to throw for these guys. They have that nice little pedestal base. They have a foot to them, much like uh, a Kylix. That is. I think that towel is too stiff. Yeah. Thunk, thunk, kind of. <laughs> when you stop wiping your hands with them and start scraping them. Okay, and the foot you're looking for is probably more like 20. Yeah, at most. At most. I think it's like low teens, mid teens. High, 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 high teens. This piece is too big. Of course it is. Because that's how it rolls. Go 15. There we go. And considering we'll be throwing more than one of these, I think the next body piece I might cut you off might be more than 50 ish. Yeah, didn't have that. Yeah. Charles joining there. Good morning, Charles. Hello, everybody. Oh, goodness. Leaning okay. right into the reflected sun. Now, what I'm doing is pencil base. Yes. Okay, so this next one's going to have a body of 57. Because you want it to be hollow, not solid. Yeah. So the part she is now throwing is your foot there. Yeah. You can see I'm just following it it's out. just pedestal base there. Yes, and she's working on the hollow part. It's kind of finger-sized hollow. Oddly enough, I have little fingers. And once again, Very all those spot. decorative ridges on it come from her Very fingertips. Nice she still joined in. Hello, dog. Good Hello. morning. How are you? Now I have to rehydrate my sponge. Yeah, your sponges get kind of crunchy. Well, they're those high-tech ones. Yeah, the mud pools are great. Oh, I actually see a sponge on your crib. Oh, thanks for my sponge, right? I'm going to put that in the drawer. There we go. Your basic clay color. <laughs> it's the issue with clay tools. All the clay tools, all the clay sponges, they all become clay-toned. And thus tend to blend in with everything else around the wheel, including the clay. There have been occasions where the the rims, the um, small silicon tools, will get stuck to the towels, and they'll end up going through the washing machine. Well, no, they come out very clean. Yep. Even the metal been, ones. Yeah. That one metal one did lose a point off of it, though. Go. Okay. Base. And now she's got the next piece of clay for the next body. My son says he look, they look like traffic cones. <laughs> oh, that, those were the um, spindle whorls. Well, those are just the bigger versions. Yeah, all well, that they are. It's only so. Oh, there's a big. Okay, it came off. It was like a big chunk that flapped up off of the bat. That happens. Uh, Theodore joined, and um, Sandy joined, and Victoria Brumley joined. Hello, everybody! Hello. We're going to throw another piece of clay. Oh, 
Greek wine journal. People who have joined in recently, she's doing it right now. She'll be throwing this part of the vessel because this is three part construction. There's the foot, the body, and the neck of the vessel. No, we can do after this one, we can try one of the larger and poorer shapes. Okay. I'll start measuring off the clay for that. Yeah. I'll measure up the other two pieces for that one. This is also the reason why there's a lot of clay in this. When she's throwing amphora or the large Greek pieces, we think she will throw more than a full bag of clay. Yeah. And this is where my back gets tired. Yes. Yes. Her, my back. My shoulders. My arms. Sometimes my, even my legs. Okay, so just a few more. So I brace my arm. Yeah, because if you look at how her um, el elbow there towards the camera is braced fully on the inside of her arm, she actually supports. Virginia joined in. Hello. Hi, Virginia. Okay, there's the neck for that one. And I'll get you off the piece. This is where the wheel lives the other 11 <laughs> months of the year. <laughs> and it's too much for the face. That's still too much. There we go. So there's the foot and the neck for that piece. Yes. I thought I recalled it being that much. It's cute. Ugh. Because when it comes to the bit, the pieces for the amphora, not sure what it's going to be next. Yep. That's about the right size. It's how how firmly the um, scale is overloaded because that is slightly under half an in four there. Set this down without burying any of your tools. Yeah, which does happen on occasion. Yeah. Oh. This way. Yep. At least we make good use of the old clay bags. Yeah. We get saved for playing in litter boxes with. Oh, that shape looks like it's coming out nicely. Yeah. Now, measure the, the opening of this so I can make the neck. And this one goes over here. Oh, brightness. I know. Let's winter go, sunshine. The winter sunshine reflecting off of the the slip that's on the bat, hitting mm -hmm. me in the eyes. Poor eyeballs. That's just not comfortable. Ooh, this has a new bushy spot. Yeah, well, that was the bottom of the bag. The last batch of this clay that we got from the um, shipper was a little firmer than was that's than is really best for doing the Greek pieces. But the nice thing about clay is until it's been fired, you can wet it back down. And this clay in particular is friendly when it comes to um rehydrating it. There goes the gushy. Yep. And the gushy spots on the clay just kinda whoop off first. What she will be throwing now is the neck part, the neck, because this one actually has a join in it about there. So from here to here, which is the reason why she took that measurement with the diameter about there. That's so why the pieces will join up.
tomorrow or the next day, depending on when they're to optimal firmness, I'll be yes. joining the pieces. Because this evening I'll be checking on these pieces, very likely tinting them with plastic to um, slow the drying time overnight. So that way, you don't want morning, them to dry unevenly. No, you don't want them to dry unevenly because then the base will be, the base of it, where it's closest to the bat, will be um, wetter than the top edge. Oh, looks like we're starting to drop frames. I'm going to go see if there's anyone else using um, beta width. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's getting really choppy. Just got off. He's either just getting off or um, hadn't gotten on yet, so I don't know why it's dropping. Oh. Ooh, freeze frame motion! Wow. Hopefully that'll improve. Itself. Yeah. So if anyone has any uh, um, questions, just let us know. Type them in and we can get can answer stuff. So this is probably the um, most exacting piece out of this out of the construction for these is getting the bottom dimensions correct, getting the total shape correct in such a way that it'll match with the bottom piece. And right now it looks a little like a volcano. Yeah. So choppy. I don't know. It seems to be picking back up some now. Yeah. But it was about the same. Yeah, I think it is about the same point in the stream as it was. Hmm. Well, we'll see if it. Yeah, it's starting to clear up. Okay. Stupid sunlink. Yeah. As is so frequently the issue, we have um, very few people I know of are happy with their internet service providers. It doesn't matter what the service does provider is. It. And it doesn't matter who, what company you've got. The nickname for sudden link in our area is sudden, sudden death, you're disconnected. We haven't had the disconnected. We haven't had the disconnected in over a year now. Yeah. It was a lot better after they buried that cable. <laughs> yeah. It used to be every winter, pretty much about this time, we'd have a windstorm and it'd drop a tree and sever the cable. Yeah, it was connected by one fiber optic cable. Yeah, one cable. It one point of failure. The entire county, including all the stores and the banks, everything. It was really kind of interesting. It's always a thing. We are not quite big enough, really. Okay, well, let's do this. I put my hand down the middle, and that looks really kind of like indigestion there. <laughs> What I'm doing is I'm just popping over to the YouTube version of the stream to make sure that we actually do have audio. Okay. Or whether we've been doing this whole thing without any audio. Oh dear. That would be something. Yep. Nope. Nope, we do have audio. Good. That's good. Any questions over there? Um, nope. And those would be popping if we had comments on either YouTube or Twitch. I do have it set it up so that they'll appear on the uh, on the screen. Oh, okay, good. So at least when we're watching the uh, um, the Facebook stream of it, we will get the comments from all three. Oh, good. The Facebook one I haven't figured out how to get those to come up 
on the screen yet. Still working on that. I have no idea if it's possible. I'm sure it it's must a, be. As always, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Working on it. Just think of all those job skills you're developing, Sarah. Yes, not a not a thing that I ever thought I would do is learn how to do, you know, live streaming and video editing. Video editing. And now look at the uh, Wow, that's that's too extreme. extreme. So now what I'm gonna do Time to cut off good. the uneven lip. Clean the end of the <laughs> Time to clean the tool. Do this. Slice through and not through her finger. No, that one's not quite sure if it's old. Yeah. Because the the thing about the clay is, particularly during throwing, it's effectively wet sandpaper. So you're gradually grinding away the tools. You're um. There are a couple of students that you've had who've um actually gotten abrasions and one time actually cuts on their hands. I've never they seen must that have before. They had really so soft hands. Had to be really soft. Yeah. Plus it wasn't a rough play. Let Robert join in and Randall and Devin. Okay. Hello everybody. Hello. Yes, my hands are lovely and orange now. And I'm not the one throwing. And I'll leave this one to do when it's a little firm. So that way we can see when the best time period for that is. I can even make that more flared. Yeah, I'm going to, sir, but something about Slowly. doing it. Yes. This is not the instant gratification kind of thing. No. Yeah. Oh, Eleanor has joined in. Hello. Hello Eleanor. Making multi-piece bottles today. So you oh, get to see okay. how pieces join up. And she's got the foot part. Because the foot. these both into shop. Because um, these will be in two, body parts. Um, yes, she's throwing body parts. <laughs> these will be two parts of the same vessel. Mm. Like that. Uh, set these up. And, and right now she's doing the pedal foot. foot. Fun thing with the Greek pieces, it's like um, experimental archaeology. Really, how did they make these things? How were those pieces put together? Because yeah. knowing the properties of the clay, you know that they weren't thrown all in one piece. It doesn't work. It doesn't now. work clay like that. Does not do the, that. She is right now throwing the third part for this kind of shape. And this that is was actually one of the reasons why I have new fingernails. Because that was the neck part that she just finished throwing. That bowl shape was this part here. Now she's throwing the foot part down there. Now that one did not um, do the pinch part for that lip yet. I'm going to wait until it firms up a bit. First one we did the pinch part right at the end of the throwing. And then going to see if the other one will come out better if wait until it's firmed up a bit first. Yeah. Just minimize that for a second. And there we go. Well now that I look at it that way. I think the one will be fine at all. Put it back yeah. on the go. Take it off the bat, look at it go mm, not there yet. And next, what she'll be throwing are yes. amphora. Yes. Well, now, this is the um, eyelash. Go up, up, down. And Kirsty joined it. Oh, Hello. Hello. I'm going to be torturing myself with making one amphora. Yeah. This is huge. Now, the, the bottom body parts of the chug there weighed about the 50 ounces of clay. 50, 50 60. 60 ounces. Measured, we do ounces because it's fairly precision. And, and it's, it's, a food a, scale. it's actually a food scale. It it's, was. So <laughs> we've never actually used that scale for food. It has only ever been used for clay, which is the reason why it's absolutely encrusted. But your piece, your first piece is measured there. It's right there. Oh. 
<laughs> this is these the first ones, piece. These pieces are more like the 120, 130 ounces of clay. And um, I've been noticing that the camera does pick up the uh, uh, motor sound uh, of, the <laughs> of the wheel, so you'll be able to hear the the sound difference, the, the strain <laughs> that the motor is under when she is throwing pieces of clay that large. Uh, Sandra Linham, do you have plans to do a video or live free feed of model carving? Oh, I could. Yeah, you could do that. Let's see, I could probably just rotate. I could, I could move the cameras, and you could take the camera off. Uh, and then plug oh, yeah. it into the laptop. I could, I could do it from the laptop. Because I must yeah. say, I do most of the model carving not at a table at all. Lay I, on the floor. I lay on the floor to do it. I think it would feel funny if I tried to do it at a table. And Eleanor, for the upper component, are you taking the hole down through the through to the bat, or keeping it as a solid base and trimming it off it's later? Two bowls. Uh, for the um, for these. Oh yeah, I I cut it off. It does have a solid bottom to begin with, and she just slices it off. And those become those cute little two dollar plates. Yeah. Whenever we do things or multi part construction, or a lot of writings. This one's out of a different clay, but this dish, the reason for things that are like this is that they were the bottom layer of that part there, just sliced off. Because if you were to take it all the way down to the bat, you have a higher degree of failure. Failure because there's very little surface area. It can just go whoop off the bat. So you're better off wasting a little clay. That's why I started doing Eleanor, these cute little plates. Eleanor says, "Awesome, thanks. Cool. I'm curious since you said that's how you do. The, you'll be doing the new lamp. Yeah, doing the um the molds for the the lamps. It's pretty much the same process as the cookie stamps." where I'll carve um, a master first, which will be how I want the thing to look. And then I'll make a stamp off of that. Okay. In the case of the cookie stamps, <laughs> it's the amount of effort it takes to move that much clay. So yeah, like those, it might take me about five minutes to center. This there's nothing clay. quick about making the amphora. Well, opposed to, you know, Centering for um, the average cup, it's maybe 30 seconds. It takes so long. It takes maybe five minutes. <laughs> you can see that it's starting to even out. You uh, want to make sure you leave that all people. the way centered. Otherwise, you're just going to have to. You spend a little bit extra time to make sure it's because any of the the little wobbles that you can still they see there, they just magnify. Centrifugal force. Throw the whole thing off. I'm gonna be doing is the bottom. If you want, you could probably yeah. bring up a picture of what I'm. Well, it's a different one from that one, but it is fairly similar in shape. Because I found one right here, just inside the fold. So I have a picture up, up taped thing. to the wall up here. Yes, she has a picture that has a line drawing of an M4, and plus, I'm right next to an image of a photograph of an M4. And so what the, the um, is? And there's an R. Yep, there's the other cat. There we go. Because she's going to be throwing that kind of shit. So what she's throwing right now is the lower half. Most of the time we do the ones that do not have this extended foot thing on them. Ours generally have just like a little bit of a lipped foot. 
rather than the full line. Because if you look at, at the piece of clay, compare it to my hand, there's a lot of clay there. Yeah, it's probably about half a head's size of clay. Finally getting to opening it up there. And then I use my whole fist. Yeah, rather than just a few fingers, it's her Because it twists fist. my fingers. How many pounds? Wow. Um, okay. What's 120 ounces in pounds? <laughs> Look, a calculator. <laughs> so probably between seven and eight pounds of clay there. Yeah. And I can't say that I'm absolutely certain how much those um, blocks of clay weigh, because it's more than five. It's more, more than six. It's more than six because the scale is completely bottomed out at six pounds. Gadzooks. <laughs> it, it's a fairly weighty piece of clay, and the amphora make use of two pieces that size really plus sick. another forty ounce piece for, yeah, the, neck. for the neck. Because that'll be that piece will be the lower half, and then there'll be a second piece of similar size for the uh, um, upper half of the body, and then the neck and there it's is a closer final piece. and closer to my nose. Did I say <laughs> on far side? She doesn't like things close to her face. <laughs> I can't even focus with the bifocals. <laughs> Everything starts off as a cylinder. This is you just a really big, big cylinder. cylinder. Because the walls are still close to an inch thick at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd say they're still over an inch. I'd say about an inch. Lots of clay still there to Lots. move around. When it comes to those pieces in period that were the the really wafer thin stuff, it wasn't that it was initially thrown that thin. What they would do is after the piece reached a leather hard consistency, they'd actually go back and use a tool and trim away the extra clay. Because the clay was valuable. You pull the walls with a sponge for moisture. Sometimes, but not always. I just use a lot of Clay on she, my hands. yeah, she water on my hands to to keep the clay wet. Well, with this clay, with this clay it works that. If way. I want to smooth it out, which smooths. is largely on the outside. Yeah, it smooths out the texture. I use the mud tools, the the flat sponges. They're a little bit pricey, but the mud tool sponges but these do last. Them. And they're a lot easier to deal with. And you end up going through fewer of them than those cheap yellow sponges. The little round ones that cost maybe 50 cents. These ones cost, what, Seven dollars. $7, but... As I said, it's, they're a little pricey. But if you've been using the same three or four of them for... Five or six. Five or six years. Versus the little yellow ones, which you would go through... Several six, of a year. Yeah, several a year. And these also... Um, have a better texture. They produce a them. much smoother texture. And they have different... Great ones. tips, thanks. You'd use um, the really fine texture for a porcelain or a smooth stone wire. That's Chris Hellerton. Hello! Yeah, because you have a couple different grades of the mud tool sponges. Yeah. There's one that is only for porcelain. That's the only thing that it gets used for. And now somebody is calling on the phone. It's probably just a jump call anyways. I did not quite catch what the phone said. Because no one ever calls us on the landline. I don't think we know anyone in St. Petersburg. No, oh, it's just crap calls. See, when we replaced the, the phone attached to the landline, we didn't realize that it read off the phone the 
the caller IDs. Until the first time somebody called us, like, what the heck? It talks. Huh. And Dimmerman, you guys do such wonderful work. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, that looks like it's going to be one of the, the taller, narrower amphora. That's what I'm striving for. <laughs> it's not a quick process. No. But if I want to get the less texture on it, throwing rings, I use a sponge rather than the fingers. Not for moisture, but for texture. <sighs> I don't think, do I don't think you're going to be throwing more than one um, amphora today. You're starting to make sound effects. It's not just me um, it's in addition to measuring off the clay and stuff. I always pay attention to the sound effects she's making when she's throwing so I can know when she's starting to get tired. And oh, women. Um, also, have you thought about doing a couple of museum replicas? We do a lot of those. What kind Donate of museum? them to a museum. It'd be a great tax write-off. Um, the amphora and pieces like this, they actually sell too quickly. A lot of the times these pieces um, find homes before we're done decorating them. And with the number of donations that your average business gets hit up with um, a year, we generally have no no big concern about having enough tax write-offs well, coming also, in a year. Well, museums won't take just any donations. No, either. no they won't. Museums are actually very picky. Because yeah. Elisa, that about this, you throw in the house and it's like, yes, oh, right it's, now, it's too cold. It, yeah, it, in the winter time, it is too cold to throw outdoors. And at our um, current place, we do not have prop, a proper shop. We don't have a heated outdoor space, a heated um, shop building. It's one of the things that we hope to, um, that we're looking to do once we move is you know, have a proper shop space. At least a two car garage. At least a two car garage that we can make um, the workshop. Because, no, having clay in the house to the degree we have isn't the best thing for your health. In the long run. Not in the long run, because kind of like there is coal, um, black lung and coal miner's disease. You get a similar thing with the pottery. It's still the silicosis, the potter's lung, which is the reason why we have lots of air cleaners in the house. And we have mats that lead from um, certain areas to catch clay being tracked out of the don't room. Don't hit the lip. If it'll bend. What? <laughs> yeah, don't hit the lip. I hit it with my finger and it dented it. Well, I need to get you measured off the next piece. It looks like you're getting getting closer to being done. <laughs> yes, because there's the next 25 pound bag of clay. Amphoras are the few times that you will throw more than 25 pounds in a sitting. And that's then, a good shape. Yeah, that's and a nice shape. I have to use my bigger calipers for this. <laughs> yes. Bigger calipers. Believe it or not, when it, one side is blue and one side is red, it's not just your basic clay color. Every once in a while you you wash them. Uh, and yeah. Put those there. Oh yeah, we'll get that water out of the bottom. Leaving water in the bottom really slows down how quickly they dry. Which when you're dealing with pieces this size isn't the best thing. How much does that kind of that type of clay shrink, Element? Um This is the most variable. It from thirteen to fifteen percent. Yeah, this one's highly Twelve variable. to fifteen percent. Which oh. is kind of annoying. Because there's times where we're trying to match the size of something and it's like, okay, we calculated well we actually calculate out the numbers to get something a certain size. And a variability of 3% when it comes to shrinkage yeah, is uh, significant. And when you're dealing with a piece that's like mm, over 12 inches high, it can change the height by over an inch. Alicia, I wonder yeah. whether you dry, where you dry your greenware 
in the winter. Frozen clay would be a thing. Fre freezing the clay actually really, really damages it. Although it does freeze some in the winter because we yeah. keep the clay outside. Our wet clay storage is outside. Now I'm actually pointed right at it. And we got to remember to order more. Yes, we do. Then the delivery person's never happy because we don't have a loading dock in the house. We'll have a big, you know, one of those big semi delivery trucks coming to deliver it because we order our kind of clay. And then they're upset because I don't have a loading dock. So you knew you were coming to a residential <laughs> address. But where the, where the greenware gets dried in the winter is actually our laundry room. We have shelves that go from the countertop level, which is the glazing station, pretty much all the way up to the ceiling. And why short people have um, molted ceilings? I don't. I don't know. I we what, really what we weren't thinking? thinking about it when we moved into this place. Vaulted ceilings. <sighs> tallest, <laughs> tallest person in the house, five five. Could stack the siblings in and still not touch the ceiling. Yeah. I could stand on my brother's head and still not reach the ceiling. Because the spine of the house, the tallest part, is 12 feet up. It's a nice house, so. It's a It'd nice be house. enough room in this house if we weren't running a business out of it. Yeah, this is kind of squeezes the humans into the corners. I can touch wall here, I can touch wall here. You aren't that far from the wall in that direction. This room's eight by nine? Yeah. It's not that big a room. Technically, this room is probably meant to be an office. Yes, but it was... Um, it was what it was listed as on the... Um, the realty guide was... It had it was three bedrooms mm -hmm. and an office. It's as not it's a bad got, because it doesn't As you can see, it's got the the French doors there. There's one of those little window inserts through the wall. So I get light from the entryway. Yeah. Because this room is both office, which is my desk part here, and throwing room, which is the other... Have to well, here, it was not meant to be a full-time profession. No. The two of us had just gotten uh, teaching degrees, so we were going to, uh, we were looking to get teaching jobs. But there are none. There, there are none. Particularly not for art teachers. And slowly this became the thing we did. Not the easiest of um, livelihoods, but, oh, but there's a what question. I oh, read that one off. Oh, okay. Sure, it's been a while since I've been looking up. You've been focused on dealing with the big honking piece of clay. You now it's the second big honking piece of clay, and this yep. is the top half. Yeah, so this one will have more of that kind of deep bowl look to it. Yeah, it actually will. The top here will. Will connect with the yes top there. Take one bowl and you put it. There on will be upside down on the other bowl. Halfway down. There we go. About halfway down that piece will be where the join is. And then I cut a hole in the center of the bottom of this one, which, which will become the top of the neck. And that's where the neck goes. Yeah, and then I put two handles on it, and poof, it's an aura. If we tried, if we tried to dry things outside this time of year, oh, they'd never dry. They would not dry. No. We wouldn't have dried um, pottery again until springtime, maybe, because it's both cold and wet. It's cold and wet. Things don't dry in cold and wet, particularly when you're not when you're talking, you know, ninety to one hundred percent humidity. The, the inside of the house is between fifty and sixty humidity most of the time. Yeah. In part because we do live on the coast and there's a lot of ambient moisture, and the other part because we're drying pottery. Yeah. 
Back to the long centering time. Yeah. Well, if you don't get it centered, you're going to get a wobbly pot. Wobble or, or something that collapses. Collapsing even worse. It's like if I'm pushing with this hand and then I'm pushing in with my fingers on this side. Because I can get more force if I press and down. And you can see fingers. how she's bracing her arms in with her legs. Yeah, because this one is I'm using as a lever. I'm watching you use both legs that way. Yeah, I know, but for this much, it's... And this is how she ends up with the sore muscles in her legs, as well as her arms and back. And hands. She's actually changed the ring size of her fingers with doing the pottery full-time for a living. Yeah, so I just will scoop water in here rather than using a sponge. Yeah, very true. You don't squeeze water. You spread water with the sponge. No, I... Just think about that one for a second. <laughs> no, not really. That's one of the things about, you know, oh, I'm doing the live streaming and having the questions is she has to pause and think and like, wait, how do I do the things? Is thing fingers for centering? Cool. I only knew, knew about using the heel of the hand. Yeah, because you use your whole hand when you're centering. Yeah. It, it gives you more control. control. Yeah. I, I have small hands. A lot of ceramics teachers are these big guys with these big honking hands. And the way they suggest may not work for everybody. If you have small hands. It'd be like trying to use um, a teaspoon for the same tap in the same way that you would a tablespoon when you're cooking. It doesn't work if the tools are different sizes. You can't uh. use you can't use an extra si small size hand the same way you would an extra large size hand when you're throwing. Yeah. The dynamics of the tool are just different. Yeah, and there's no one right way of doing no. it. You have to find what's going to work best for you. And if teacher tells you otherwise, they're <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Because it's not just left-handed, right-handed, or in her case, ambidextrous. When it comes to all um, effects. Yeah, I know. You don't care which hand you use, you, because for you, it doesn't matter. Funny thing is, is I'm very left-handed. My brother is very right-handed. The two of us can understand each other when it comes to how things work if you're handed. She doesn't. She's like, what's the big deal? Just use your other hand. It's like, no, it I doesn't work that right. way. I can write with either hand. It's messy with both hands, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Your hand you really don't want to see great right. with either hand. But yeah, she can use the, the mouse either hand. Use the mouse left hand. She doesn't have a dominant hand when it comes to um, doing throwing. She just uses whichever hand works the best for that angle. Because yeah, then I could just switch and I could do it this way. You really freaked out a couple of painting instructors because she couldn't get the angle that she was looking to get with the paintbrush with one hand, so she just switched and kept painting with the other. Really freaked him out. I and it's kind of like, what? Because what? You just what? switched hands and I thought, oh, oh I and I then did. she'd switch back. I go, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's there to be sorry about? But it's kind of like, uh, it's a, It's a cool uh, trick that, you know, we have to be wired right to do. Yeah. When I was in elementary school, early elementary school, it was, and this, then I'd switch back. Because it really didn't help. <laughs> Solar charging? Okay. Okay, that's the one about the centering there. And now we want to start pulling and go. Yes, because it'll be more of that, that big curved shape versus the more conical shape of the first half. Yeah. Let's do, 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 do. Okay, Facebook, get the notification off the top. Thank you. Vance Hubble at it. Yeah, yeah. joined it. Good morning. Hello, everybody. This is the top half of 
the top half of the amphora. Down, get the fingers into shot there. That piece there is going to be basically the middle third of the vessel. From about halfway up the body to the top of the neck, to, to the base of the neck. Like the shoulder there. kind of area. Yeah, because the neck part generally looks vaguely like a barbell. Yeah. I'm just reaching the stage of concentration there. You also have to just slow it down when you want to get it. Yeah, especially when you're dealing with that much clay, you don't want too much speed. Centrifugal force at that point is not your friend. Yeah. And unlike when she's throwing um, is it individuals. Right no, it isn't. It's not big enough yet. I was thinking that it was still a little too yeah. narrow. Yeah, that's, I was just going, yeah. And unlike when she's throwing plates or bowls, or particularly cups, when it comes to the lips on these, since they're just going to be pieces that are joined, they're very squared off. Because then you have to do the slip and score. Yeah, because basically those are going to be yeah, join yeah. points Yeah, because versus something you put your mouth on. These are not, you they're drink more of a, out of these. You, no. You pour from them. I've seen people drink out of the amphora. Yeah, but that's silly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. Yeah, well, it's kind of like seeing the, um, that little video segment of Antramaka drinking out of the, um, yeah. the she 18 she, did, she did that once. Yeah. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> she was going to do it. An 18 inch cross. Highlights. Like the, the award she was talking about. That's cool. But yeah. And for that big. Oh, that's the cat playing with that piece of packing paper again. Like, what is that sound? Oh, since you're getting closer, I can actually cut you off the next piece of clay. Now, with the, when you're done with the amphora, do you want to call done, or do you want to do the next for the rightons? I can do the next for the rightons. Okay. Now it's just a little too big. <laughs> First it was too small. Now it's too big. It's just the way it is. Okay, and there's... Like 36 ounces for the neck. Yes, there we go. Good. A little fairly cooperative today. So what I'll do is I'll take that piece yeah, from get you. Get the water out of the inside. Um, right here. I think the sponge is more often used for getting water back out. Yeah, I think that is. I think you're right. Yeah, and, and smoothing things out. Oops, no, I don't want to close that yet. Or for doing oh, the initial okay. pull on plates. Yeah, it's that program. Okay. Uh, da -da. Part two. Only one more part to that. Yeah. To be yeah. that upper neck part. The upper neck part, yes. Which would be about. Four inches, about four inches across. Yes, that part she doesn't have to worry about so much the width when it comes to matching it up to the other pieces, because she cuts the whole what's currently the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> Did it pull the bat off again? No, it was just listening to your the flinch in your voice. <laughs> it's loud. And it echoes more on that side of the room. Yeah. Well, I'm not on that side of the room to hear it, so I wouldn't. <laughs> it's the way the sound reverberates in this room. It's a lot nastier, that slap clay slap sound over there than it is over here. Which I'm thankful about, because I'm generally over here. Hello. More people joining. Hello. I'm doing the neck for the amber. The neck. The neck. The neck, madame. Let's see. Start 
building buildings in the I think there's a folder that come on, open up. Joining. Hello. Hello. How are you this morning? Like I'm really expecting a response. <laughs> well, some some people have been responding. Yeah. And as I said that, and it's kind of like, mm, yes. <laughs> but you're not going to hear them. You're going to hear me reading their messages. Yes. Uh, he waves. <laughs> Hey, way back. Goofy <laughs> hands. Goofy hands. Let's see which one do I want to open. Probably that one. He says, I'm just throwing pots. Oh. It is kind of a, um, it's a meditative. It's a very meditative process. Good for building the muscles in the hands. So so good at getting the toxins out of the system. That it is. She used to have rashes on it, her hands all the time. Sounds cold. I'm like it depends Only if on you the, use cold water. Or cold clay. Oh yeah. Freezing this, cold clay is not a happy thing. <laughs> no, she complains loud and long. This time of year, I bring in the clay a couple days before she's going to be throwing with that. Because while the clay might be getting down to like the 30s outside, by bringing it in before that, you know, it's in the 60s, room 70s, room temperature inside. The times that I forget, I have to get her hot water to put in the throwing bucket. It doesn't really, it all, and all that does is m mitigate the cold. Yeah. So once again, when um, that piece is dry and ready to, or dry to the right consistency, that'll get assembled with the rest of it. And oh, the bottom of that piece will get sliced off because that's just the neck portion, the top narrow part of the amphora there. Which takes a fraction of the time that it takes the root of any other piece of the amphora. I suppose we'll ha also have to do the assembly. Yeah. Well, people like to see me do the assembly on a video. It'll be it'll be in, in a, a couple days. It'll be in a couple days before the clay is the right consistency. But would people like to see the parts of the amphora, the parts of the jugs that we threw earlier in the stream, assembled? Because these are multi part construction piece like this. Ah, it's a yes. Yes, please. That was three pieces, not including handle. Uh, I've got to pull more of those big handles. Joy. Go. There we go. That is uh, part of that one. And now for pretty much the and other after end of the throwing stuff. those, that's when I could really use the back rub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like trying to rub cement. Uh, yep. Okay, so what we're doing next is we are putting the we are throwing the necks for these, which so it's currently just back over here. a bird head. This will be the uh, um the head is the of a writing. I have to make oh. that yep. big at the bottom. Set that down for a moment because that'll probably be 12 ish. Yeah. Because people like the, I can make some of the longer graceful next yes. this time. And I will switch Just the stuff on the screen. That is too much play. play on everything. Oh, yes, always. Eleven. Black, Close black is practical. 
Yeah, there's a lot of black clothing in our house because, you know, clay stains don't show. That one. Tell that one to go away. And now since that one was one of the bird-headed ones, I will open this one. With the little pieces, I just wrap my hands around it and then be pressing down for the center. We are making this very different. There we go. Now we have um, some of the writings up there because you know, there we go. We're throwing the necks to the writings. These are some of the bird examples. Oh, yes, we've got like. Four or five people saying yes, they want to okay. see the um, the assembly of the amphora. How many heads do we have? To do? Okay, that one's getting one a little bit bigger. But yeah, got another six heads to oh, to be correct. <laughs> I thought so. And now I just do this. I'm just using. Two fingers on either hand and going like this and pressing it's in, hollering it in. But you have to press equally with both hands, otherwise you're going to knock it out of round. No. Or off the bat. Yeah. Or no, no longer be centered. Yeah. And don't hit it with your finger, it knocks the lift. <laughs> Got it with my head. Still too big. <laughs> Put the little right sits off in the case when I. Make something, it's okay. It's too big. It's still too. Almost. Almost. <laughs> the small writings are fairly precision when it comes to the size of their necks. Yay. Okay, so that's neck one. Even though I don't want them to be on the second shelf, they kind of have to go on the second shelf. Toes, too. Okay. Head two. This was once poor dirty bath towel. A light blue bath towel, as I recall. It's not yes, blue anymore. Little, and here is head two. And it'll get its eyes once it's attached to the neck. Because these were um, hand sculpted. The calipers. Calipers. No. Oh. Down's right. Okay. Head two. Clay. Squishy, squishy, squishy. Now, if I recall correctly, we have done um, a video of right and assembly. Yeah, that's up on YouTube. Yeah, that's up on YouTube. If you want to see the making of the right in the heads, you can go to YouTube. Okay. Let me see. I can probably get to it. I can probably I share or so. link. Yeah. Nope, I don't want to do that. I think we did the um, time lapse. Yeah, with that, it's very much a time lapse thing because it's. Do you like watching Hatred? Yeah, it's a long, not terribly exciting process. It's an hour. I don't want to go. Do you think the Amphora took a while? And of course, the video is a bit slow. The internet is a bit slow because the video going through. Oh, yeah, Sarah. Look what you did to Yeah, the... I'm just switching screens. I don't have anything playing over there. It's just going for the link. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay. So is it your machine or is it the internet? I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. The attaching... Oh no, the attaching the right next was one of the earlier videos that was done with a phone about a year ago. Okay. And it's only like a minute and a half long. Let's just copy the link. 
think I can do that. This. There we go. And that should be the, um, yes, there's the link to the video for attaching the right necks. So that'll be the next step for these that she's throwing next right for right now. Because I'm like, wait, I don't have to just reference. I can share the link. Yes. And that'll also get you to the um, channel where all the videos are uploaded because uh, one of the favorite um, ones that we've done was actually time lapse and I think it's like eight hours in five minutes or something like that. It's most of a work day. Play spot it on the list of it. Six hours in four minutes. And that follows from throwing to pulling handles to draw drawing and painting. Typical day. Yes. Uh, meow. Kitty. Okay, next ten. Oh, you, is that sunbeam moving? Oh, oh no, which are sunbeams a day? Move so quickly. And now, yeah, rather this thing. one is, sorry, a little too far away, oh. and apparently not round. Not even close to being round. <laughs> well, that's the issue with these ones. Yep, there we go. And I already have a clay cut for it because for the two birds, this one. Is an octopus head. Probably one of the ones that gets the most sculpting after it's attached to its neck because after it's on there, it will apply the hints of tentacles. Yeah, Ritha and um, James joined. Oh, hello everybody. Hello. Now doing the next for the right ones. Yep. Which, um, just a few comments up there. There's actually a link to video that where shows the next step, which is the attaching of the necks. And that'll also take you to the uh, um, the Running Team uh, um, YouTube channel, which has all the saved live streams and the videos and the like other that. videos which have been, you know, more neatly edited rather than being live streamed. Including, you know, one or two shots like there's one of one of the cats deciding that they were going to nest in one of the bowls. Jazzy. Yes. And if you um, doing the glaze and what shivering, it was like in shivering the thirties outside. It was in the twenties that 20s. night. It was cold. My was hands were cold. frozen. It was also late at night, which is often when you we do the firing because yeah. electricity is cheaper than. You do get charged less sense. for electricity at night, which is, yeah, one of the major reasons that we do throwing and do the firing in the dark hours. And in fact, one of the things we be doing today is actually doing glazing to get another this, another glaze firing going, so we can ship out uh, more Christmas orders. Yes. And the Angela Hopton joined. Hello. Hello. Julie. <laughs> so you have to make it smaller. Yes. Because then you just have to color it back in. It's all the little finicky details when it comes to throwing the right and next. Pull the next head out of bag here. Ooh. I'll start. It's relatively round already. Uh, <laughs> too big. Too small. Too big. No, it's too small. Just still too big? It's still too big. The, or the tongue's too big. Too small. And this one is another octopus head. It's in this bag are four octopi and two um, ravens. We did the next... We did a couple of um, steps oh, on the cats, the cats but yeah, there's some cats. That's, some of them are specifically uh, um, going to be leopards, so slightly different proportion, proportions to the heads. Is it pretty? Is it? Yeah. Apparently not. 
What I forgot, <clears throat> what I forgot to do today was get myself some tea before we did this. Okay. Yay. Next. Next. Now I understand why the stream the streamers always make sure they have a glass of water or something. Or tea. Or tea. The other day when we were doing this, I had a nice big mug of tea that was mostly gone by the time we were done. Or talking about, oh, your nice hot cup of tea. Sure. Yeah, I know. You didn't get to drink your tea while it was hot. Oh, oh I need to catch more clay. Oh, wait. Yeah. Here. Is this enough? Yeah, that's enough. There we go. And we go. one more hit after that. Let me make sure that I do this one. No, that's three. Four, so now two more heads. You did bigger pieces earlier. So that she has more stamina. Also, that way, if you got really tired out, we'd be able to stop there. That's kind of a long time. I'm just going a little further. No, one more piece. Just one more piece. But after, I think the right head probably be done for the day. Yeah, it'd be the wise thing to do. You went through one and two thirds bags of clay. Yeah, that's like 40 pounds. 40 pounds is enough for today. Yeah. Normally she only does 25. And I can usually do more pieces. Yeah, you, let's see. Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, same Maybe number not. of pieces. <laughs> oh, sixteen. Wow. Once you finish the writing heads, you will have thrown sixteen pieces, which is fairly average number of uh, pieces for throwing a given session. Over the course of twenty-five pounds, though, not forty. Have um, Dave add in another person. Hello, Dave. Get back in the bag. Get back in the bag. Everybody back in here. Yep. As we're making oh, the necks for it, she's doing right now is making the necks for the Brightons, which are the shapes like these guys down here. Got the bag full of heads. We have hand sculpt and it just sounds horrific, doesn't it? We yeah, have a it's bag specializing of in body parts all day. Yeah? Because here is one of the heads. It doesn't have its eyes and... on yet. But it'll be a bit like that raven, right down there. There. Orient there. Orient it in the same direction. Yes. Your feet and right in nets. I'm doing bodies and nets. Four of bodies. Oh, you need to measure the next piece. I got that on there so, while you were busy over there. There we go. Only one more piece after this. And in a few days, perhaps as soon as tomorrow, and then as, as late as three days from now, depending on how things are drying, we'll be doing um, some streaming of the pieces, the big um, and four pieces being assembled. I don't think I'll have to adjust the camera for. They're not that tall. <laughs> I'm like looking over there going, mm. Like, no, yeah, it it'll yeah, it'll yeah. still all be in shot. Yeah, there we go. We were thinking ahead when we set the camera angle. Yeah. Which has the uh, um the two cameras doing this. They're two different. They're just um USB webcams. One of which this one here is over a decade old. It's the reason why it's this small camera. And the other one, which is rubber banded to a tripod. 
it works. It's only and it's how it was it three, four years old? But that is a model that's still in production. Yeah. Because we recently got another one, but that was for uh, um, just my, Skype purposes. Because my microphone was dying. I uh, yeah, I got tired of only hearing one syllable out of every <laughs> sentence. That's really hard when you're playing a co-op game. Yeah, because yes, well, we're not working. Well, our our favorite leisure activity is um, is currently at uh, home. Um, computer gaming will have because it's something that is it uses the hands in a totally different way oh kind of is it different not didn't use the hands no but kind of yeah and sometimes it's good Sorry. yeah there are times Can't where our hands are too tired to even play which is sad it's well what do you do at that point it's like um go for a walk watch something that's enthralling because there's a lot of movies and shows that we watch while we're, while we're working watch listen to listen to it's more like listen to so you get to look up every once in a while and go, oh that's happening on the screen now it's you're more or less just listening to the show or things, like things go on forged empire great british bake-off <laughs> how's that for a combination it's amazing it's both the making similarities things. both competitions and they're making things and it involves heat and they're both very positive. Yeah, which they make for pleasant watching, pleasant listening. Other than that, it's... We listen to videos of other people getting to play games that we never have time to play. Some of which have game mechanics that have no interest in playing. Uh, yeah. But they've got cool stories. And some of them, the, it's the personality. Some of them, it's the personality of the individual playing the game. Which, yeah. like... I would never be hilarious. interested in a vampire game. No, but watching um, Cryotic there play all oh, the vampire game, it's absolutely vampire hilarious. Vampire Masquerade. It's just it's um, funny. It's one long comedy skin. Yeah. It's a thing. And, <laughs> and it, it's just, funny it's to just to. him. It's not a put on or anything. Almost, Kitty. We're almost done. One more piece. I'm gonna measure this one. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, like, oh, so, yeah. uh, hello. You need to measure the diameter of this piece. So okay. Now I get to seal it with the bag. Whoops. I get to take the uh, fingernail mark out of his eyeball. Oops, this is never a good phrase. Okay, so before we assemble the writings, I need to trim my fingernails off. These fingernails are not always a potter's print because, yes, that is how the writing heads are stored. Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags. Put those go up on the shelf next to the, their necks. Meow! They're wow! Yes, you are! And I believe that is just her talkative volume. Just think if she was unhappy about that. Oh, I don't know. Get off the computer. It's bedtime. Yes, the cat alarm. When the cat the alarm, alarm goes off. Morning, the cat alarm. When the cat alarm goes off, people down at the street can hear her. My 5.30 alarm? <laughs> I don't know how she manages to be so precise. Neither do I. Does she read the clock? No, it's bad that you can... No, when you're... Away at an event. He's still Sleeping wake up. Sleeping in is six. Yeah... Too big? Too big. You've been very consistent today when it came to the right next. That's right. Do me. When your nose is there, we go. You don't want to rub clay on your nose. Ah. Tell me about it. Okay. And with that, it's the last one. We're done. Today. We're done.
And then the woman will see just how creaky you are getting up off of your stool. <laughs> so. yeah. As I said, creaky. Mm -hmm. Creaky. So. Because yeah. the parts that aren't moving that much are the legs. Yeah, and they get stiff. They get stiff. So, bye-bye, so, everybody.